I was telling you how, how technical this stuff is, you can just sort of smile at him and say, okay, doc, let's move forward here. <laughs> now, how many of you ever heard of cholesterol? Raise your hand. Hmm? If you didn't raise your hand, I think you're asleep. Okay. Each year in America, we spend over $100 billion for cholesterol testing, not treatment. Just cholesterol testing, we spend over $100 billion a year. It's a huge industry just for cholesterol testing. That's why you know, doctors made everybody in America paranoid. How many of you had anybody in your family living in their 80s or 90s? Raise your hand. Sure, I think most people in America have had somebody in their family live to be 80, 90. I guarantee you they ate eggs, they cooked in butter, they didn't have margarine back then. They salted their food, uh, these people smoked, they, um, um, gosh, they ate red meat instead of tofu, they ate eggs instead of egg beaters. They didn't exercise, and yet they lived to be 80, 90. Many of them went on to live to be 100. And following their advice, we're going backwards. Spending $100 billion a year for cholesterol levels and eating the way doctors have told us. Most people revere their doctors. We've gone from 17th in the world in longevity to 24th. So it doesn't seem like all that's doing much good. Well, if any of you can find me a disease, if anybody in this room can find me any disease that is caused by elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides, they'll give you a million dollars, small bills, and any offshore account you want tax-free. There's not a single disease caused by elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides. When you have elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides, I kind of look for, um, you might have a deficiency of niacin, vitamin B3. You'd have deficiencies of chromium and vanadium, two trace minerals. You might have deficiencies of the essential fatty acids or a ratio problem between omega-3 and omega-6s. You could have early goiter or hypothyroidism will cause an elevation in your uh, blood triglycerides and, and uh, blood uh, cholesterol. You could have early uh, diabetes. You can have early diabetes. Even before your blood sugar goes up, your blood cholesterol and triglycerides go up when you have diabetes. Don't take my word for it. Go to the library and look in a medical book on diagnoses. What's the first blood changes that occur when you have diabetes? Elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides. What's the first blood changes when you have low thyroid? Elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides. Do the elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides cause any disease? No. They're just signals. They're just signals to look somewhere. Do they cause cardiovascular disease? No. Have nothing to do with cardiovascular disease. Nothing. Well, why do doctors get so excited about lowering your cholesterol and lowering your blood triglycerides? Because they get a kickback every time they write a prescription for statin drugs, Lipitor, Lopid, and Lipitor. Why would you take a drug that doesn't really do anything, doesn't prevent diseases, lowers your cholesterol, that's what they do, but it causes liver cirrhosis and blindness. That's why you've got to go in every couple of months to get your blood taken to see how your liver's doing. They've got to look in your eye to make sure you're not going blind yet. Why would you take a drug that gives you liver cirrhosis and makes you go blind when it doesn't do anything? How many of you ever heard of free radicals? Good. How many of you heard of trans fatty acids? Yeah, these are common words today. Everybody in the street, even little six-year-old kids know about these things. And um, yet doctors continue to recommend to consume free radicals and trans fatty acids. If I were to come out with a product, Dr. Wallach's 100% pure free radicals, the finest trans fatty acids in the world, and I'd label and put them in a health food store, how many people would buy them? Zero. I, mean, I wouldn't sell any of them. And yet, everybody listens to the doctors when the doctors say, I want you to use margarine instead of butter. Margarine is nothing more than a big block of trans fatty acids and free radicals. It is pure, 100% trans fatty acids and free radicals. They've killed more Americans with margarine in America than all the wars put together in the 200 plus years have been a country, both domestic and foreign. And so if you have any margarine at home tonight, I want you to go home and box it up and ship it UPS to Castro. <laughs> Put a little note in there that says, my cardiologist says this is good for your heart, and I, you know, in a show of good faith, I'm sending you some margarine. And hopefully he'll be stupid enough to use it. And I like to have my patients eat six to 10 eggs a day. The more eggs you eat, the lower your cholesterol goes. The more eggs you eat, the lower your cholesterol goes. And I, I personally eat six eggs a day, so I, I hope you do too. Um, they're great protein, and if you don't fry them, don't fry them, don't cook them in margarine. You want to poach them, soft boil them, hard boil them, soft scramble them in butter at low temperature. This came out in 1995. This uh, little study was presented at the annual meeting of the American Heart Association in Anaheim, California. They said, two eggs a day won't hurt. And when that report came out in 1995, that sent a shockwave through the entire medical system. Because coming out, eggs were the father of the devil. I mean, if you ate eggs, you were doomed. Nobody would hang around you. He's an egg eater. You know, oh. I really like this one. Makes my 10 look pretty conservative. This came out 
13 years ago, uh, New England Journal of Medicine, very respectable medical journal, normal cholesterol in an 88-year-old man who eats 25 eggs a day. Now, you have to ask yourself, why was this old dude eating 25 eggs a day? Maybe he didn't have any teeth and couldn't eat steaks anymore. Maybe he owned an egg farm and liked to do his own quality control. <laughs> but I think it was more, more scientific than that. If you appreciate that 95%, 95% of male sex hormone, testosterone, 95% of female um, sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, 95% of the weight of our adrenal hormones, um, our adrenaline, comes from a master steroid in our body. It's made from a master steroid in our body called cholesterol. You can only make 10%. The other 90% must come from your diet. And when your adrenal glands are exhausted, what's the most likely thing that you're not consuming enough of? Cholesterol. When you're sitting there watching TV, guys, when your wife's saying, hey, look at my nice nightgown. Would you rather watch TV or watch me? <laughs> and she's got, got you on an egg-free, butter-free, chicken-skin-free, red meat-free diet. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why there's no flourishing colonies of vegans? <laughs> All sit around and hum.